So today we're going to talk about this web simulation platform for floods that we've developed called fastflood.org. So it's, it's a, a real-time simulation platform. It basically allows you to get about 97% accuracy in predicting floods while being about 1500 times as fast. So instantly you get a forecast of what a flood uh, will be for the area that you selected. And how did you end up developing such a tool? Was it connected to your research? Yeah, so we, we've been working on flood modeling software for a long time, doing a lot of traditional modeling. You have this set of equations called the saint fanon equations, which are typically solved for a landscape to describe the flow of water over it. But we've been messing around with algorithms uh, as part of this software, and we came upon a method to predict what's called steady state flow in a really rapid way. And later we invite a way to say, okay, let's go from steady state flow back towards the actual uh, predicted flood flow that you would, uh, would get for an event. Okay. And how do we use this application? And who is it for as well? So we, we see a lot of users for this, uh, this platform. What we did basically with the algorithm, because we, we started to develop it, and we noticed that a lot of people found it really impressive, but it's difficult to use because it was part of a scientific software package. So the first thing that we, we then started to do was say, let's make this into a web-based simulation tool. So everybody can go to the website, fastflood.org, and you can start. You do need a little bit of background knowledge to know how to set the different settings, how to get the input data there, to recognize a bit when things are working well and when things are not working so well. But everybody can basically start. And we did this also to expand the user base. So besides our own students, but also uh, colleagues here at the department, we also see a lot of people in flood consultancy being very interested in using this in their daily work. Uh, and besides that, even decision makers, because it's such an accessible tool that they can also start to use it in their work. And what are more advantages and benefits of this tool? You already mentioned some, like it's web-based. What are others? Yeah, so, so a couple of things maybe. The, the main benefit is the speed of the model. So because of the speed of the model, what you can also do is sort of interactivity. So let's say you want to design something like a levee system, or maybe you want to place a reservoir. You can sketch that into your landscape and immediately see how that impacts the flood forecast from the model. So it's a matter of one second and your new simulation is done. A second benefit is that we've linked it with global data sets. So there's a lot of satellite based data for the entire Earth. So that could be, for example, elevation of the landscape. That could be the type of surface cover, buildings, forests, uh, pastures or something else. It could be the type of soil that's uh, on your landscape. And all of this information is very relevant for flood modeling. So we've linked these global data sets to automatically feed into the model. Uh, and that saves the user a lot of time. They don't have to do it themselves. And what are the limitations? Because there's a, uh, both sides. So what can the model not do? Or what, what, why shouldn't you use the model for certain? Yeah, that, you're very right. Uh, as, as with all science, there's some benefits and some drawbacks. It is really fast, but the way that we make it so fast is that we're making some approximations. All models, all physically based models have to make some approximations. You can never perfectly model reality, but we are making some approximations as well. And compared to traditional dynamic flood models, um, the, yeah, you have to keep in mind that the approximations that we're making, whether they're still valid for your type of application. Typically, we see that we can model some event, type of flood events very well, flash floods, uh, riverine flooding, um, uh, rainfall-driven flooding, that works all very well. But things like uh, circular levee systems that fill up with water from the outside, that's not something you can do with our platform yet. Okay. So show us now what is it that we can do with this application. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a short example. So we've been uh, working in the past years a lot on this uh, Caribbean island called uh, Dominica. So I'll go there in the tool. What we can do is, uh, well, simply select the automatic data downloading uh, function, select the area we want to model. We get an option of global data sets that we can input into, uh, into our simulation. Oh, I'm going to go for 20 meter. So every 20 meters will be one grid cell in our simulation domain. And automatically it's going to download the data that we need. I can go ahead, set the rainfall event that I want to use as an input for the simulation. Press simulate. And there we have it, our first flood event based on these global data sets. Now there's a lot you can add here, things like infiltration of water going into the soil, 
channel definitions, um, land cover details. I won't show you that for now. Uh, what maybe is interesting to show is the real-time mitigation drawing. So let's say, for example, we want to test uh, if we could build some kind of reservoir in a location. We can simply draw it in the tool, specify the height of the reservoir, take into the settings that we want to accommodate for reservoirs as well, simulate, and it's there. We've just added the reservoir to our landscape and our flood simulation also adapts accordingly. Okay, thank you. And what is the future of this tool? You now developed it, and what are the next steps you see for the tool and research? So th yeah, there's a lot we want to add. We're really enthusiastic about it. We see that uh, users also really like it and they see a lot of benefits from using it. One of the things that we really want to do is add better global data sets. Uh, so we will do our own pre-processing and link that to the tool. The second thing I think is better training materials. So we want users that are using the tool also to have access to the training materials to know when am I using it correctly and when is something going wrong? Because yeah, we're using it for important uh, stuff usually. And the third thing is we want to also go into other processes like mass movements, uh, landslides, which you've seen before on this, uh, this channel as well. Well, thank you, Bastian, for this interview. No problem. Thank you. Do you want to be a geo hero as well? Then take the first step and click the subscribe button and then the bell button to always be the first to know when one of our geo heroes posts a new video.